Ich bin der Sheriff. Was kann ich für Sie tun? What? Internation? Ah, yeah, yeah. Ingrid, könnten Sie kommen hier bitte? Ah, guten Tag. <laughs> Who are you? And what is this cowboy talking about? Oh, we yeah, are speaking German. <laughs> join us. No, I will not join you. Why are y'all speaking German? Because German is the second most popular language in America. <laughs> yeah. That's hogwash. Uh, was hat er gesagt? Uh, I think. Uh, you are offering to wash his pig? Oh. Yes? Nein, no, danke. No. So you on vacuero with Pagnol. Ah, now I don't understand that. I think it was uh, Spanish? Si, si, si. Spanish? Yes, people come to America from all over the world, not just England. Oh, oh. Und einige von uns waren schon hier. Oh, yeah, oh. and some of us were here already. Don't tell me he's German too? No, but... Uh, some people make an effort to learn the language. Well, German ain't the language here. We speak American. Take a look around you, lady. This is the U.S. of A. I think you'll find it's English we speak here, old bean. I don't speak English, old bean. I speak the Queen's American. What is this idiot reading? Did he just call me an idiot? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, now you are learning the language. Clever, clever, clever. <laughs> Foreign cowboys ain't welcome here. So y'all can just settle right on up. And have a lovely ride of your horse amidst our beautiful scenery. I mean, we're all from somewhere, right? <clears throat> live and let live. I always said that. I've had a hog killing time and all, but by hook or by crook, I gotta giddy on up and get my chow from the chug wagon. <laughs> Well, uh, see y'all later, brother. Did anyone understand a word of that? I don't think he's from round here. Uh, <laughs> uh, music! Ah, uh, that good! Time for another. Ah, yes, President Number 7, Andrew Jackson, who was nicknamed Old Hickory because his soldiers thought he was tough as hickory would. Jackson died in 1837. His funeral was a somber affair with one very badly behaved guest. Good day. On behalf of President Jackson's family, it's my honor to welcome you on this sad day. We're joined, of course, by President Jackson's parrot, Paul, uh -oh. who was by his side throughout his long career and picked up many of the words he used to say. Andrew Jackson was a nitwit. Nit, 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 not, not what I would call a dull man. Far from it, he was a shining example to us all. From a humble background, he trained hard to become a loser, lawyer, a lawyer, <clears throat> and was then elected to government. He co-founded the great city of Memphis, Tennessee, and loved nothing more than to sit on his veranda, sipping a glass of wee wee. Wee wee, wee wee, wee we all know he sipped iced tea. I never knew a man with more powerful farts, farts faith, than he. <clears throat> he always traveled everywhere with his uh, battered old Bible by his side, filled with Lakers. wisdom. <clears throat> Let's skip through to the gun salute. Uh -oh. Let us pee. Pray. Pray. All we did was nickel her money, wreck her house, flog her, and torture her daughters. Suddenly, she's marching on Colchester and slaughtering everyone. Holy Venus! <gasps> she's heading to London! Don't worry, I'm miles away. I legged it to Gaul. And can I also get some nipples? Olives, uh, no pips. Go away! <sighs> Oh. <laughs> hail Nero. Yeah, hail me. Um, listen, Boudicca's heading to London and she's like totes enraged. I know, I'm on my way to fight her. Just as soon as this foot rub is finished. Harder. Watch the corns. So you can, uh, you can save London, yeah? London and St Albans have had it, but after she's crushed those cities, she's in a lot of trouble. This could be the battle that makes me famous. 
Oh, this is too much like hard work. I never liked the place anyway. I'm pulling the army out of Britain. Hmm. To Boudicca at the Iceni tribe. You can keep your poxy island. I don't... Oh, hello. Someone's left a comment on my Lie Hero page. <laughs> Low, 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 low. Boudicca here. You know, I'm the one trying to kick the Romans out of Britain. You're playing. What? Rubbish. OMG, this is you. <gasps> My name's Nero. I'm a liar hero. I wish I had talent, but I've got zero. <laughs> Honestly, the Romans deserve to be slaves ruled by a Roman woman like you. How do you like them apples? No one trolls my art and gets away with it. She is history. I will like open like a full can of whoop bottom on her. Um, let battle commence, Suetonius! Suetonius! Just updating my battle status to currently at war with Boudicca. Yeah, well I should hope so. So great, thanks. Oh, oh. I'm all hot now. So Boudicca's army prepared to fight the Roman legions. And our Celtic druid doctors got ready to help the wounded. Although I'm not sure they were much use. Ah, it's Mrs Carver, isn't it? Yes, is Dr Hannity not available? He's been called away to a very important golf match. I'm Dr Quigy Hoch, a druid from the time of Queen Boudicca. What an unusual name. How's that spelt? I've no idea. Now, Milo? It's written in your book. No, it isn't. What seems to be the problem? Well, he's got a bad cough, <coughs> Doctor. Yeah. There are a few ways we can treat your cough. Cough medicine? No, we don't deal in magic here. Ingest this roast mouse? No, that's not going to happen. No, Come no, no. On. Mum, he's trying to put a mouse in my mouth! Oh, squeamish. Mm. Well, let's try transference medicine. Oh, that sounds better. It's a very popular treatment where we transfer the strength of an animal into you. How would you like to be as strong as an ox? <gasps> an ox? Yeah, I, I suppose. Just climb into this bath of ox blood, meat and bone marrow and lie in it for three days and nights while I perform a ritual dance. Then you'll be as strong as brave Boudicca. How can we go? Oh, Some people are so narrow-minded. Mind you, as we'll see, when you're top of the tree, not everyone likes you. Take Crooked King John in 1215. He was a truly rotten ruler who annoyed his people so much they rebelled against him and forced him to agree to a list of their demands called Magna Carta. And Johnny Boy was not happy about that one bit. Your Majesty, we, the noblemen of England, are worried about your continued abuse of power. It threatens the future of the realm. So we've gathered here at Runnymede and we've written a list of grievances in this document here called the Magna Carta. Yeah. Really ticked off, actually. Really yeah, ticked off. Big time. Magnum Cartos, whatever. Got some grievances of my own, actually. I think you'll find our grievances are more serious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you find mine now. I don't think you will, actually. I think I will, actually. I don't think you will, actually. There's only one way to settle this. I propose a grievance battle. Oh! <laughs> Hit it! What, what, where to start? Which part? We got so many grievances, we could fill a cart. Let's start with some facts. Like tax, they're so heavy that they're gonna break our backs. We can't pay, there's no chance. We lost all our money when you lost France. The northern bit, anyway. Your Majesty, you got pwned. Drop some beats, player. I'm confused. Is this real? I thought I was the king. I'm holding his seal. Kneel to the king, I'll see you grovel in the grime. I'll tax what I like, I'll even tax this rhyme. Barons don't grovel, it's time to get real. Listen to me, dog, or you're gonna feel some steel. This chart is tight. We don't need to fight. Just hit it with your seal and give us our rights. Some serious points. I ain't finished. We want a council to represent which people. We want a free church with a free steeple. We want you to stop stealing our sons and holding them hostage like you have done. There's vital stuff here that you've got to give us. There's also some stuff about fishing in the rivers. 
So stop! Read what we plead, agree the deed in running need. Do what we ask or we're gonna make you bleed. Ooh, yeah, to hear what you're saying, if I don't tread gently for my life, I will be praying, so tell me what to do. You're the boss. They will have to do this later because I'm taking up the cross. Interesting development. I wonder... Uh, shut up. Hang on a minute. You must think we're barmy. While you're talking here, you're hiring up an army. So how about this? Let's barter. We'll, we'll stay loyal if you agree, agree to Magna Carta. Oh! Whatever, dog, I'll agree, you skanky scroll. I'm tired of this game and it's time for me to roll. I ain't bothered, it don't fill me with sorrow. No one will even remember this tomorrow. Plus, I'm messes with the poop and he'll ignore this ting. I do things my way, cos I'm John and I'm the king. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Man, this king is fat. Harsh. Hello! I've just arrived in the Holy Land during the Middle Ages. At least Napoleon isn't here with his armies. Or his feeties. Don't think I'll get much peace and quiet, though. No. The Crusades are in full swing, with Europe trying to reconquer the Holy Land, which has been lost to Muslim forces. But the Crusaders have more than met their match. Now they've come up against the Muslim leader, Saladin. When it comes to fighting in the desert, no one is smarter. This guy is Saladin Credible. The Crusaders are headed for Jerusalem, but we can deal with them here by the horns of Hatin. Kill them! Kill them all! Patient, patience, my friends. We must be cleverer than that. We can attack them in a different way. We're in a desert. So ask yourself, what do they need? A good kicking. No, no, no. A sword through their skulls! Kill them all! Kill them all. No, 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 no. Think about it. Think about it. What must they do every day in the desert? Huh? Here. Kiss a chipmunk? No, 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 not that. Put it this way, what must we all do? What must we all do every day to survive? Go to the toilet? Other end, other end. Brush their teeth. What is this? What is in this? Jug, jug. Water! Water! Oh. Water! I totally drink water every day. So, what must we do? Kill it! Kill it! No, no, no! Go back to the water. Think water. Drown them! Drown them all! How am I supposed to drown them? In the paddling pool I keep on my camel? You can drown in as little as one inch of water. Fuck. Oh, thanks for that! That's really helpful! What happens in the desert if you don't drink your water? They have nothing to wash their uh, Saladin. Saladin! <laughs> it's called it's, Saladin! It's, 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 it's Saladin. What happens in a desert if you do not drink the water? They get thirsty. Yeah. Oh. And what happens if you still don't drink the water? You get the bad skin, no, chappy lips. No, past that stage, okay? What happens next? You die. Yes! yes! Boom! One point to idiot number two. Well done! Where do they need to go to get their water? Begins with a W, ends in an L. Wall. Rhymes with bell. Cello. Where? Where? When do we? Well! well. Yes! Yeah. So we go to the well, we block their access, they cannot drink any water. They get weaker and weaker until they can barely stand. They're about to die. And then we can finally... Ah, kill them all! Kill them all! To the well! Kill them all! Wait, 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 wait. Can we just run through it one more time? <laughs> we go to the well. The well is this way. We rats are great sailors. We've travelled right across the world, spreading goodwill and disease wherever we go. I've got everything it takes to be a great sailor. Courage, a boat, and I once lived in Devon. Ah, oh, yes, way before Chris Martin and Tom Daly conquered the world, these other sons of Devon were conquering the high seas. Paul, I don't want to go to sea. Don't be daft! The best navigators in the world comes from Devon, just like us. Come on, there's some people I want you to meet. Oh, <laughs> Sir Walter Raleigh and Sir Francis Drake. It's me, John Davis. Discover the Falkland Islands. Oh, yeah, the place with absolutely no gold and lots of penguins. And absolutely no gold. Yeah, I just said that. Oh, yeah. oh them penguins. Better than gold, if anything, I reckon. 
Anyway, my son says he doesn't want to go to sea, would you believe it? I'm begging your pardon, you what now, beg your pardon? That's the best place for a fine young Devon lad like yourself. And we'll show you why. Through a song. I sail right round the globe and so many a sign. Who are, who are? I attack Spanish ports to show Queen Liz is mine. Who are, who are? With treasure in the hold Who are, who are? Spanish says I's a pirate But I still got all their gold <laughs> Now I've got a brand new land to find And you can come with me We're gonna make all our fortunes When we cross the sea And discovered some penguins who are who are. Right? My birds. Oh, come on, everyone loves penguins. Right? Ah! Hello, I'm Queen Elizabeth I. My courtiers were always trying to impress me. Of course they were. I'm the Queen. I can have their heads chopped off. <laughs> so. What did Sir Francis Drake give me as a small token of his esteem when he arrived back from his sailing trip around the world? Was it A, a sack of potatoes, B, a sack of pearls, or C, a sack of pounds? The answer is C, a sack of pounds. 160,000 pounds to be precise. That's more than half a billion in your modern money. <laughs> I'd still like the pearls and the potatoes as well, though. Oh, Chop Chop, I am the Queen. Once alone on the ice, the despair is overwhelming. Still, who's up for a game of football? Oh, me please. Do we have a football? We can make one out of ice. Topper! Hey! Oh, skip. Keep rowing, lad. We should be out of this freezing cold sea in about oh, three weeks. I mean, it's only 800 miles. Just think of the poor wretches we've left behind at row. <gasps> Penguin meet, anyone? Is there any more dog? That finished Friday last week. Sausage dog. How about a surprise slushy? Ooh, what's the surprise? I've made it yellow. Snow sprinkles? Um... <laughs> we finally made it to South Georgia! <laughs> Unfortunately, we are on the wrong side of the wretched island. But, right, we're going to have to climb over the mountain to get to the port. We'll be risking our lives, but think of the poor men we've left behind. It must be a living hell. All right. I heard there are nibbles. <gasps> yes, I can offer you frostbite and hope you like penguin. Please, I am desperate. I have travelled all across South America and the South Atlantic looking for a boat to rescue my men. Now, please, if we do not live now, there will be none left alive to save. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> We're back! Shackleton! Uh, Shackleton? Ah, yes, right, sorry. It's, uh, it's been a while. Uh, we come back to rescue you. Ah, thank goodness you're here. We're a man short for the footy. We've travelled thousands of miles to rescue you and take you back to civilization. Excellent. I'm sick of penguin, and ice football isn't great for the toes. Plus, a sea lion's made off with my banjo. Uh, 
Then we've got her just in time. Come on. Oh, uh, remember, there is a war on. We can go home, but as soon as we get back, we all have to head off and fight in the trenches. Right, we're saying. <clears throat> Where is that sea line with my banjo? <sighs> oh, I love this one. Trapped in a snowstorm with no way out. Arctic explorer Peter Freuchen will take human ingenuity to the limit and beyond. If I could just squeeze out a poo, I could make a frozen chisel and dig my way to freedom. It's a true story. It's a poo story. It will warm your heart and open your bottom. Frozen Freuchen. Let it go, let it go. Trapped for several hours underneath all this snow And maybe it's the frostbite talking And the lack of air to say goodbye Say goodbye to, to the, the cold, cold and the ice. ice We don't have to stay here anymore I'm gonna make a door I'm gonna make a door with you With me? With Pooh! That's me! With Pooh, I'm gonna make a door can I say something crazy? Will you marry me? Can I say something even crazier? You are talking to a poo. Frozen Freuchen, coming soon. Though I'd probably give it five minutes if I were you. Together at last, the most romantic love letters of all time set to music, featuring their original words, including the ancient Egyptian classic, my heart is carefree, like a red fish in its fish pond. Your voice rejuvenates me like fat mixed with honey. Your love has joined to me like incense to the nose. I'm exhilarated without beer. He's exhilarated without beer. Without beer, yeah, yeah, with a the soaring love letters of Russia's Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandria. You are my very life, sweetheart. Off you go again alone. No more kisses and tender caresses for so long. Chaka, buff, buff, chuck. I love you and long for you terribly. I kiss you tenderly and love you infinitely. Farewell till our next meeting, my darling Alexei. Yours eternally, your old hubby, Nikki. Peace out. And from the Emperor of France and his notorious lover comes the country ballad that took Europe by storm. Well, most of it. Josephine, 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 Josephine. Not a word from you was an else have I done. To think only of you, to love only Josephine, to live only for my wife, does this deserve such harsh treatment from her? You alone who rules my heart knows only too well the power you hold over me. Write to me, think of me, and love me, Josephine. Yes, ever for life, Bonaparte. It's drippy, it's soppy, and you need a copy. Order it now. Some are lucky in love. They meet the woman of their dream and they spend the rest of their life with them. Others just chop their heads off. King Henry is back looking for the next, next special one in his life. The specially special, special one. Hi, 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 hi. How's it going, Henry? Jane Seymour. Yeah. Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry if I don't seem in a great mood. Uh, just getting over a pretty tough breakup. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You must be heartbroken. Yeah, well, to be fair, it's hard on her. I mean, she is in bits. Look, do you want to get married? I need a male heir. Pretty sharpish. Yeah? Henry, you look really happy. Well, I am. Really happy. Um, she's the best one yet. She's a winner, a keeper. Not a divorcee, not a, you know, choppy. She's a, a keeper. And she's brilliant at real tennis. Fantastic drop shot. <laughs> Good times. I hope. Yes. She died. Yeah. 
Pretty upset about that, actually. King Henry is back. Blah, 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 yada, yada, special one in his life, blah, blah, you know. Hey, how's it going? I'm... No, oh, Henry VIII. Oh, wrong restaurant. Taxi! Henry, tell us what happened. Uh, so we kind of had to get married in the end. Uh, politics. But uh, we got divorced straight after, and I've given her a bunch of properties so she can live off the rent, and uh, it's all uh, pretty much cool, basically. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm straight back in for the next one, uh, which could be the one, or the uh, third, or fourth. Which one is it? The fifth. Good evening, George Crumb, the chef. I uh, hope everything was satisfactory. I hope everything was satisfactory. No, oh, the fish was divine, and this cherry pie was to die for. It, it was perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, if I could make one teeny-weeny suggestion. What? I was wondering whether you could make your french fries a little thinner. Uh, these were uh, a little bit thick for my liking. <laughs> thick? Uh, a tiny bit. Yeah, sure. I mean, they're gargantuan, aren't they? They're so big, I wonder how you could fit them in your mouth without your head falling open. Look, you can barely see it from one side to the other. It's way too big to fit in your tiny little mouse mouth. Well, I was just wondering if you could cut them a little thinner, that's all. Oh, his lordship, the king of Saratoga Lake, wants them thinner. Hmm? I'll give you thinner. Oh, my God. What? Why did you just kiss me? Ah! <laughs> Is that thin enough for you? Now you're just being silly. No, nothing's too much for the potato police. I told you not to mention the French fries. I was very restrained. Every time we go anywhere. There, there you go. There you go. There you go. Tuck in, huh? There. Is that thin enough for you? Oh dear, you can't see through them. Maybe I should shave a little off the top to count skinny chips. These extra thin french fries are delicious. They're so, so crisp. You should patent these. You can make some money. Sure! I'll get down to the patent office right away. I'm sure I'll make a fortune out of some deep fried slivers of potato crisps. That'll catch on. It's a good job we didn't tell him the soup wasn't very hot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexander Graham Bell, and I want you to meet my phone. My phone is a new device that lets you talk to someone even when they're not in the same room, as long as they're in the room next door. Mr. Watson, you idiot, what's BTS? What? My phone is the most powerful, compact, lightweight phone ever invented. Because it's the only phone ever invented. I wish you'd never invented that stupid thing. What was that? <laughs> it's more just for calls. Use my phone to find out what the weather's doing. Oi! What's the weather doing then? I don't know. Enjoy the latest music. <laughs> Play online games. Quit the king for a chick! I am trying to work! It's great in an emergency. What's on? The house is on fire! I wish it was. Stop calling me. And that's not all my phone can do. I actually know that is pretty much all it can do. I thought of something else it does. Yeah? Yeah! Need my phone! Now it's mobile too! We got sleep, mean and cruel Stuff they don't teach you at school The past is no longer a mystery Hope you enjoyed Horrible history